now we're ready to talk about double integration and polar coordinates. So as usual, let's just kind of start with a hypothetical, see what we got going. So let's say we want to integrate a function that is nine minus x squared minus y over the unit circle, the region x squared plus y squared equals one. And we're stuck using um, rectangular coordinates. It's possible, probably. I haven't honestly worked this problem out. Um, but it looks pretty challenging. I mean, look at these y boundaries. We have uh, limits of integration here. We had to solve for y and then take the square root of both sides, accounting for the positive or negative possibilities. Uh, integrating that stuff and plugging in and getting a whole bunch of expressions, it, it's probably doable, but it just kind of looks pretty ugly. So it, it begs the question, is there a better way? And it turns out there might be. So what if we got polar coordinates into the mix? Well, x squared plus y squared equals one becomes r is equal to definitely not three. r is definitely equal to one, right? Um, and then, And then the, the function becomes nine minus y squared minus, or z squared, wow. Nine minus x squared minus y squared becomes uh, nine minus r squared. So that sort of seems like it's promising, but we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here. So let's just review polar coordinates really quickly. Um, the image off to the right can be used to figure out that x is equal to r cosine of theta, y is equal to r sine of theta, um, the relationship x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared holds from the Pythagorean theorem. And then tangent of theta as opposite over adjacent for a right triangle with angle theta there and just dropping this down, you would have tangent is equal to y over x. So that's how you convert between or work with and go between the two different coordinate systems. So let's take a look at integration when we're comparing um, rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. So you see there's an image off to the right hand side and that shows um, that instead of breaking things up into a square grid like we did when we were working with rectangular coordinates when we were slicing along the x or y axis or with the length of the slice determined by the other variable, when we're working, oh yeah, an area differential is dA is equal to dx dy or dy dx. When it comes to polar coordinates, we've got a little different situation and, and idea here. We're going to um, let slices travel along a theta range, if you will. And so we're going to take slices and we're going to let them vary over theta. Should have hit this button first. Okay, so spoiler, all those are up now, but let's talk about it. So there it shows one um, unit of area in the polar coordinate system, but it's, it's not a perfectly rectangular region. And so we'll, so we'll get to this in a moment, but just for now, bear with me here. So imagine what we're gonna do, you know how when we were uh, integrating over rectangular regions, we would have a rectangular region in the plane and we'd say, okay, I'm gonna take vertical slices uh, over this X interval and let those slices travel along that X interval. And then their, their height's gonna be determined along the Y. Well, we can only work with R and theta with respect to polar coordinates. And so what we're gonna do is imagine we're trying to integrate over this little filled in blue, light blue square here. We're gonna take slices and the slices are gonna be in the direction of R because remember polar coordinates, you head out some radius and then you've got your points. And then we're gonna let theta vary so that we can generate this entire domain of integration that we're looking at here. So this begs the question, what is the area differential? We might like, you might take a guess and say, hey, the area differential is gonna be dr d theta. And you wouldn't be, too far off, but you're wrong enough that it'll definitely cause some issues. So why, why is it gonna be different? Let's take a look at that on the next slide. Okay, so I, and before I go, it's gonna bother me. I need to put not equal, because that's definitely not true. Okay, so why is it not the same? Well, let's just kind of blow up this. Don't worry about the 0.5. Uh, the 0.5 is some ones on the X and Y. I, or yeah, axes. Um, let's label some stuff here. Okay, just with respect to the, the light blue shaded in 
um, region, a portion of a sector, if you will. Let's uh, let's label this lower piece theta. Okay, yeah, because this is definitely an angle out, so you know that'd be angle theta. All right, and so if we wanted to let this kind of change theta, delta theta, if you will, then and this length would be up here. This angle would be defined as theta plus some change in the direction of theta. And so what we have here in the center is kind of one unit of the change in area. So I'm going to call this delta A here. Now let's look at these uh, boundaries here. Well, this lower boundary we'll just call R. Because you know, if we were to extend this line out, we'd draw dotted lines until the point we care about, and then the lowest part of the this slice, as we're letting it travel that way, um, is going to be defined by r. And then we'll we'll label this upper uh, boundary of the the slice as r plus delta r. Okay, so that's great. Now imagine we're going to zoom in on just this region. And so our goal here is to find the area of this region. And, on, and yes, the sides are straight, but these two sides, let's go. Oh, no, I don't want to use different color. These two sides I just drew are straight, but these pieces, and I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit, are definitely arced along that R radius, if you will. So what is the area of this thing? Well, we have to answer this question, and we want to know what the arc length is. The arc length of this is given by r theta. That's the formula for our arc length. So our um, so that's going to be r times instead of theta. Well, you know, theta as arc length formula, we'd be talking about this theta. And so what do we have that theta defined as? Well, the way we wrote stuff up here, that theta, this is going to be delta theta. So this arc length is given by r times delta theta. And now what is the length of the other side of this region? Well, that's the change in r. You know, because to go from r to r plus delta r, you have to go delta r. And similarly, to go from theta to Theta plus delta theta, we have to go delta theta. All right, so what is going to happen? Well, as usual in calculus, we're going to take the limit uh, until we get more and more and more of these things, and until these partitions are so infinitely small. So what is one of these, what's this region going to look like as we take our limit? Well, and so more and more slices is effectively taking delta r and delta theta to zero. So in the limit, as we take delta r and delta theta to zero, this thing is going to uh, delta a, our region, is going to be very, very similar to a rectangle. And we know the area of a rectangle is given by length times width. And from above, our length is delta r and our width, if you will, is r delta theta. And so if you do the Riemann sum and get all fancy with it, you end up with dA is equal to r dr d theta. And so this is important enough, it gets highlighted. This is the area differential in polar coordinates. You have to, have to, have to, have to remember this little r. And it's very easy to forget. So well, I'll try and emphasize that as we work in examples as we go through this. OK, so summarizing what we just kind of talked about, uh, the, the area differential is given by r d r d theta when we're in polar coordinates. So let's go back to our previous example. And polar coordinates, um, that mistake carried through.
All right, apologies. The video probably did a little hiccup there, and that's because I went back and fixed the mistake that you just saw where I had r is equal to one, uh, three instead of r is equal to one. Anyway, so I'll go back just a second. So in polar coordinates, the circle has equation r is equal to one, uh, x squared plus y squared equals one, r squared equals one becomes r equals one, and then the integrand becomes nine minus r squared, as we saw before. So setting up this integral, the, the key point of this slide here is to, again, emphasize that, there you go, do not forget that little guy. And when the area differential, you need r dr d theta. You can switch the order. It could be d theta dr, but it's, it's more common to do it as dr d theta. But again, as uh, long as all works, you can switch the order. So let's see what we can come up with here. And it looks like when I uh, generated this thing, I used a circle of radius three. So just, just pretend that this circle is at radius one and that we don't have these other marks there. That'll be good enough. Okay, so how are we gonna express this region of integration? Um, in terms of R and theta. Well, so imagine we're taking a variety of slices and we're gonna start at theta equals zero and I'm gonna slice along theta equals zero and I want my slice to go all the way out there. So when theta equals zero, I want to let my R value vary between zero to one. Like I just kind of showed you, you start at the origin and for each slice, you're gonna let R vary from zero to one. And as we let all these slices go, we're going to move them in the theta direction. So how far are we gonna to need to go to generate the entire unit circle? We're gonna to have to go all the way around to two pi. So zero less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to two pi. And here's a graph that I made that kind of illustrates that point. It's not perfect, but uh, I think it helps to kind of ex to see why that works. And so as you kind of watch, what I've got going is I've got the radius and theta expanding out to um, whatever radius you're working with. That's in this example, it's, it's three, um, but yeah. And that's not actually what's happening as we go, but hopefully it gives a little bit of an intuition as to why we, as we let R and theta vary at the same time, we get the entire region that we're after. Okay, back to our example. So now we've got our integral set up. And again, notice I didn't forget this little guy, but the secondary comment, you do have to put your integrand in a set of parentheses because that extra r in the area differential is applied to the entire integrand. So you got to remember that too. So let's go ahead and work this thing. As usual, I'm going to break it out as an inner and an outer um, integral. Integral from r equals to zero to one. Sometimes we've done a lot of these now and you've seen that I like to put the the labels there, but sometimes when I'm rewriting things, I'll, I'll always pretty well write it once really well. But when I'm rewriting, I get a little lazy. Sometimes I'll just put the R at the bottom of the bottom in limit of integration. Okay, so distributing the distributing this little guy, we're going to get nine R minus R to the third power dr. In doing this integration, we're going to get nine halves R squared minus one quarter R to the fourth evaluated from r equals zero to one, plugging in for, well, let's just go ahead and do it down here. Plugging in for r is equal to one, we get nine halves minus one quarter minus, now plugging in for zero, we get nine halves times zero squared minus zero. Again, careful if you're just plugging in zeros that the expression does actually go to zero, but in this case it does. And so we get, nine halves minus one quarter. What's nine halves minus one quarter? That's 18 fourths minus one fourth. That's 17 fourths. Hopefully anyway, the outer integral. Okay, so now theta varies from zero to two pi and we are integrating a constant 17 fourths that we got in our last um, problem, d theta. That means we're gonna get theta and we're going to evaluate theta from zero to two pi. And so that's going to be two pi minus zero, and we're just going to get two pi. 
it should be apparent that I don't have uh, notes written down for this one and I'm flying off the cuff here. Because, yeah, that's not right at all. You can't forget about your constant. That's 2 pi times 17 quarters, which tidies up relatively nicely at 17 pi over 2. And that is now the actual correct answer. OK. So for the next bit, let's talk about how we can express some regions uh, in polar coordinates. Practice that. Because part of this is we're going to have to be able to express the region of domain of integration in terms of polar coordinates so that we can set up our limits of integration. So express the region between the center circles centered at the origin of radius 4 and 6 that's located in the second quadrant using polar coordinates. OK, so what do we want? We want the region of circles, radius 4 and 6. OK, so let's do that in red here. Circles at the origin of radius 4 and 6. Well, that's going to be this circle of radius 4, r is equal to 4. And then, oh, no, we want to stick with red for all of it. And then r is equal to 6 here. Got ourselves a nice uh, region there. Now, we're only interested in um, the area between this. So if I was going to you know, I'd shade it. But I'm only interested in the area between it in the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, I only want from here to here. And so I want. Well, I don't have a blue highlighter, but you know, there we go. We'll, we'll just use red. There we go. That's a nice looking region. So what do we know? Well, what does our radius vary between? Our radius varies between four and six. Imagine what these slices are gonna look like. So if we're, we're gonna come up here, I'm in a dotted line where we aren't interested in, that's gonna hit the region we want. So there's our slice. And we'll let that slice vary along the theta direction. And so that shows us that sure enough, the radius varies between four and six. Now, what does our angle theta vary between? Well, up here we have pi over two. And so that's gonna be our starting point, the lowest theta. And then over here, we're gonna end at pi, sort of the end of the second quadrant, if you will. Okay, whoops, I went really quickly for that, but there's our conclusion. And from that, I could set up an integral, which integrates, say, a function over that uh, relatively clearly. All right, so now let's express the region between the x-axis and x is equal to 1 minus y squared. Well, let's fire this up and see what we got. All right, so that finished loading and it just occurred to me that I haven't got to the slide. I probably should have put it in here before this point, but if you hit this little graph settings button here, you can switch between um, rectangular coordinates and polar coordinates using those two buttons there. And uh, Desmos does a really nice job of it. There is a slide that explains this later, but we'll get to that when we see it. So uh, X is equal to square root of one minus Y squared is sort of the right hand hemisphere of the unit circle, if you will. And if you plot this on a, on a polar grid, I think it, it becomes relatively easy to see. OK, I can figure that out. But let's go back and sketch this on the paper. All right, so now I know that um, this is that part of the circle. That's what we're given from this equation. OK, so it's the region between the x-axis and this. That, my friends, is another typo. I meant the y-axis, so let's get that fixed. That will make more sense. All right, so we're going to enclose this thing from both the y-axis. So we're after this region right in here. OK, so um, how do we want to start this? So what are slices going to along in the letting theta vary? What, what slices are we going to take? Well, I'm going to propose that we start down here and we take slices and let theta vary that way. And that'll give us our entire region. So what does r vary between? How long are my slices? Well, they start at length 0, and then they go out until they stop when they hit radius 1. So uh, r goes between theta and 1. And what's theta vary between? 
well, theta varies between not three pi over two to pi over two, but rather negative pi over two to positive pi over two. We'll get the job done here. And if we return to that calculator, let's see if it's still open. It is. I went ahead and plotted this region in here. And you can see off to the left-hand side of the screen that you can actually enter R as less than or equal to one. That's just hit the less than button or the left uh, sort of arrowed bracket and then follow it with the equal and that'll give you a less than or equal. And then if you hit tab or use your mouse, you can actually control these boundaries as well. And it'll update the graph accordingly. It is a great way to check and make sure that Yes, you have got the correct polar representation for the region that you're interested in or that you're working with. All right, let's do another one. All right, so we've got x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 4y. And once again, we're just going to start by graphing what we're given in a calculator, hopefully. All right, so more than one thing going on here, but let's just zoom out just a little bit. Okay, so there we are in red. We've got our rectangular coordinate thing. It looks like we've got a circle centered at two, um, of radi zero two, uh, yeah, zero two and radius two, and that's what that looks like. So how are we going to ex uh, express this in polar coordinates? Well, let's head back to our slides and see if we can't figure that out. All right, so this thing looks like it's going to be a circle. Uh, radius two centered at zero two. So it's going to be, uh, yeah, it's far from a perfect circle, but you know what? I think it's a, per a circle nonetheless. Okay, so this begs the question, what are our limits of integration? Well, so the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to convert this thing into polar coordinates. So x squared plus y squared equals 4y. I'm just saying equals instead of the dealing with the inequality. We'll don't worry about that later. Well, x squared plus y squared is r squared and 4r cosine of theta. And as we've seen before, we always want to try and get our, our polar expressions in terms of we like to have them r is equal to f of theta, meaning that we have r kind of like we have y is equal to f of x. We like to solve for y. We like to solve for r when we're working with polar coordinates. So we're going to divide both sides by r and get r is equal to 4 cosine of theta. No, it's sine of theta. R, uh, y is sine of theta, not cosine of theta. Sorry about that. OK, so let's think about r here, and then we'll think about um, theta. So a single slice would be sent out right here, and it would just travel on out like that, and then end there. And we want to take lots of these slices, let theta vary. So what theta value are we going to end up having? We'll talk about theta in a second, but right now we want to look at what does r vary between? Well, as r starts, it starts at the origin. It's very, very small. So it starts at 0, and then continues traveling out in a theta direction for a particular angle until it hits this boundary. And that boundary is given by r is equal to 4 sine of theta. So r varies between 0 and 4 sine of theta. Now we're getting into some interesting stuff here. And so the next question becomes, what angles do we need to generate this circle? Uh, do I have to go from 0 to 2 pi? Or if I go from 0 to 2 pi, will that do something funny? And polar graphs can give you an intuition, but don't rely on them strictly at all, right? Uh, so my intuition here says that, I'll, I'll kind of talk about theta and red, that the very first point, that would be theta equals 0. There's nowhere really for the radius to go. It's just kind of the initial point. And then the next one, we let it go. And that sure as heck looks like, you know, pi over 12. And, and that blue highlighted one is pi over 6. And, and as we keep going, you know, this vertical one would be pi over 2. Keep going, keep going, keep going. We're hitting all of these values. And then as we, get, as we approach pi, 
again, right there at that origin, there's really nowhere to go in that direction. It's just a little point with like radius length zero, but in the direction of pi. So I think that theta is going to vary between zero and pi, and that'll be enough to generate this entire circle. Now, should I rely on I think? No. Um, I'm going to make you go back to pre-calculus and calc two and and really, really, really dive into why that is the case. No, I'm going to encourage you to use Desmos and use it well to uh, verify what you think from a good sketch. So we'll return to our graph, which with any luck will be open in the background. And uh, I think I got to turn that one off. Nope, I don't have to turn that one off. And so I've, I've done this funny thing. Let me put this into projector mode so it's a little easier for you to see, make things bigger. I've done something funny here with uh, the theta. I've let theta vary from zero to a times pi over 12. And then I've let a down below in the third field here, the one that's highlighted, vary between zero and 12. That means it'll take 12 steps um, or it'll just go from zero to 12. And so what happens when I do that? We get this really neat animation of exactly what happens as you let theta vary from zero to pi um, while taking a slice in every single direction. Oh, I hope that hopefully that that justifies. The other thing you can do to really, really just like I was just playing with the animations here. But if you were checking this, say on your homework or a problem like this, it's, you could just play with this and say, oh, OK, pi. And then you could just slap, I don't know. Uh, and then say, hey, uh, two pi. Notice if you put two pi in, it'll show you the same thing, but it'll have traced it twice. So you just play with things and say uh, one half pi or point, whatever's easiest for me to type right now. Point three pi, okay, yeah, that doesn't. So yeah, play with it to make sure that you have in fact got the correct um, polar expressions for the region you're working with. All right, now let's take a look at this little guy. We want to express this region in terms of polar coordinates. Okay, so we don't have the polar grid here, but that's okay. What angle is related to the perfectly diagonal line y is equal to x? Well, that's pi over four, 45 degrees, so pi over four. So, so we know where that is. And uh, if I imagined a slice, I would start here, and then my slice would start here, radius length three, and then it would go to radius length five. I'd like to call the r from polar coordinates radius. That's basically what it is. And then we're gonna let these slices vary from angle pi over four to pi over two. So theta varies between starting at pi over four to pi over two, and r varies between three and five. And we've done it. We've expressed that region in polar coordinates. Very much cleaner than if we had to express that region in rectangular coordinates. OK, let's, let's look at something that is not so clean, but still possible. OK, express the region bounded by x raised to the second x squared plus y squared equals four, y equals one, and y is equal to root three times x in polar coordinates. Now, the rest of the examples we've looked at have kind of been very circular-ish and lend themselves really well to working with polar coordinates. But just because they're not perfectly circular, and sometimes we may run into cases where we have to do this, um, we can still convert these things. So I've got this thing drawn, not in a polar grid, but in a rectangular grid. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to put a really light kind of polar grid on here to help us organize our thoughts here a little bit. Why am I doing this? Because I want to imagine what one slice is going to look like. And so I'm going to do red for the gen general slices. OK, so where do we want to start? You want to start, your first one's going to start there. So this is going to be our lowest angle. And then our highest angle is going to be here. 
as we let theta vary. And between there, we're going to take a variety of these slices. And just keep going until you generate that whole thing. But we don't want that entire red slice at all. We only want the portion of that slice that is in our region. So one of our slices here would look like this. Let's just do that. Okay, let's label a few things in here. Um, this bottom line is y is equal to one. And if we were to extend this out, we'd have y is equal to root three x. And then the top one, I'm not gonna bother labeling. It'll come into play, but it'll be that. And if we were to solve that for y, that'd be y is equal to the positive square root minus x squared. Technically it would be plus or minus, but we know that that's the upper half of the circle. So it would be the positive square root. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, first, I don't know, that radius looks like it's gonna be hard to figure out. So let's start by trying to figure out our theta bounds. Okay, so theta bounds. So let's start with the upper one. We have an, at least we have an equation for the upper bound. We know that the upper bound is related to the line y is equal to square root of three x. Well, what relationship do we have involving both y and x? Well, for polar coordinates, we have tangent of theta is equal to y over x. And so let's solve this thing in terms of y over x. We've got y over x is equal to the square root of three. And this is only, we can use this to relate it to polar coordinates as tangent of theta is equal to root three. So um, these videos are long enough, so I'm not gonna get into the details of pre-calc uh, as to why this is true, but tangent of theta is equal to root three is related to the angle of pi over three. And if we kind of look at that picture, sure enough, that sure looks like pi over three there. Oops, let's get too messy. Let's see if we can do better, sort of. Okay, so there's the upper bound for theta. Let's see if we can find the lower bound. All right, so for this lower bound, I'm gonna re-sketch re this off to the right here. Uh, and I'll say, okay, what have we got? We've got this thing, which goes between radius two, and uh, I've got my y is equal to one line. And the very first slice we have, which isn't gonna have much radius at all, it's the radius, you know, would be just right, that point right there. But that's the first angle we need to find. And so let's ask ourselves, what does this point look like? I'm just using blue because it's convenient. Well, I know y is equal to one, and so we don't know the x coordinate. But what curve is it on? It's on that upper curve. And that upper curve is defined by x squared plus y squared equals to four. Okay, so going ahead and subs, oh no, what have I done? Going ahead and substituting this one into that equation, we would have x squared plus one squared equals to four. And solving that out, we would get that x is equal to square root of three, plus or minus square root of three, but just looking at where we're, we are on the uh, rectangular coordinate system, that's clearly the positive version of root three. So we'll go ahead and put root three right in there. Okay, well, we learned something. What, what did we learn? Well, from this, we can find the equation of that red line, similar to the way that we used tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Uh, and we did that based on the equation of the line y is equal to root three x. The equation of this line is going to have slope rise over run. Uh, is gonna have the equation y is equal to one rise over root three run times x. And now I'm gonna bring that over here into my lower kind of calculation. Okay, so once again, we've got y is equal to one over root three x, solving that for, um, well, putting it in the form of y over x, we have one over root three, which gives us that tangent of theta is equal to one over root three. and just, I know I said I wasn't gonna get into it, but one half over root two, those are common values for sine of theta and cosine of theta on the top. This tells us that theta is equal to pi over 
six. That's also the way that you figured it out up here when we were talking about tangent of theta is equal to root three. Okay, so we've done our, we've successfully done our theta bounds and they're gonna go between the upper bound of pi over three and the lower bound of pi over six. And looking at this, you know what? I buy that. That looks like from pi over six to pi over three in the polar plane. Maybe it would have been easier if I graphed it in the polar, but you know, I wanted to show you the algebra to get through that and a little bit of trigonometry. Okay, so now we have to tackle what is left. What's left is the R boundaries. Our, our R bounds, if you will. Okay, so what have we got? Well, let's go ahead and draw just an arbitrary slice going up through our Thing. Again, red is just to show the path you take to get there. The blue is what we actually want. Okay, so from that, which one, just looking at it, which one's relatively easy to identify? Well, the top of this is r is equal to two because it's on the r equals two circle. So our upper bound for this thing is always going to be r is equal to two. All right, let's hope the lower is that easy as well. Okay, so lower. Hmm. Well, now we're over here and we're thinking r is equal to what right there at this little point at the bottom of that. Well, um, I know this lies on the y equals one line. So let's take that information over here and see what we can do with it. y is equal to one. Well, I don't know, let's convert this into polar coordinates. The y is r sine of theta. And our goal usually with polar coordinates is solve for r. So we have one over sine of theta is equal to cosecant of theta. And it turns out that r is equal to cosecant of theta is the horizontal line at what we think of y equals one. So putting that all together, our lower boundary is cosecant, whoops, CSC of theta less than or equal to r less than or equal to upper boundary of two. All right, there are three slides, we only needed two. So let's fire up the calculator and see what we've got to confirm our logic. Okay, and so here you can kind of see um, that I've plotted the rectangular region and I have not yet selected the polar region. So let's put this into that, it's a little easier to see. So r is equal to r being greater than cosecant of theta. Notice shades that. And there's no uh, Desmos is limited, I, or at least I'm limited. I don't know how to make it shade between these two regions. So, and then r is less than root two. Notice that both of these are restricted for theta between pi over six and pi over three. And you can see the overlap of those two shadings definitely gives us the same region that we need. So we did it. We managed to figure out that region in polar coordinates. So um, in general, we can apply the same things we already know to uh, about double integrals to polar coordinates. We know that if you wanna find the volume under a surface, you integrate over the region R, um, you integrate the function with respect to the area differential. If you wanna find the area of some region in the plane, you just integrate over that region, you integrate the area differential. Similarly for polar coordinates, the big majorly important punchline here is that you have to remember that the area differential has an extra R in there. Okay, I'm gonna split this video into two because we're about to do a bunch of examples of calculating actual integrals.